This is Day or Night Exotics TV. I'm Del the Night, and you can see here Phoenix, my Brachypelma Emilia, the Mexican painted red leg, laying on her back, uh, about to molt here. Uh, I'm gonna cover about close to three weeks here with her and the Boma, which is after her, so you wanna stick around for that. Um, I'm gonna show the, uh, the first feeding after um, these guys molted with both of those guys, so if you, you wanna stick around for that. Um, she has a little bit of a spot down in there. She has a huge rump. So when she's moving around her enclosure, sometimes she'll drag it around that, on a spot like that would happen with any tarantula, but it's the first time she's ever had a little spot like that on there, but usually it comes from her just kind of dragging around. She has no issues at, with that at, at all after molten, so not an issue at all. She's getting pretty big. She's around, after molten, around four and a half inches, close to five inches, and uh, she's... She can be a big eater when she wants to, but she'll go on a little bit of a fast. And this is her right after she molted. It took her about maybe three three hours to molt, somewhere around in there. I used to film them, but now that I've gotten, um, now that my reptile room is in my basement instead of in my room like it used to be when I first started out, really hard for me to catch them and stay down here and really catch up on filming them. Um, hopefully one day I'll get back to being able to film the whole process. But with my reptile room being in my basement, it's really hard to keep going back and forth. So, um this lady here, if you don't have one, obviously uh, these brachypamas are, you know, mainly from Mexico and you, they like, you know, more drier uh, climate. But uh, I usually keep half her enclosure a little damper. Uh, this is um, because she molted. I put a little bit more uh, wet uh, moisture in there than I normally would do. But usually I just kind of take maybe a quarter of it to maybe half the enclosure. I might soak it down, especially in the summertime where it tends to... Um, add a little bit more humidity. She likes a little bit more humidity than maybe my, uh, than uh, some of my other brackies. Uh, my Bowmai likes a little bit more uh, humidity, but uh, she really can stand it being pretty dry. She don't really mind too much. If it gets too wet in there, she'll, she'll go crazy. Uh, if you didn't know, the B. Amelia is my favorite uh, bracky in the hobby. I, I absolutely love them. I just love everything about them. That triangle, the triangle, a, a triangle period is like one of my favorite shapes. So to get it on a tarantula is great. Also, the colors, as you can see here, beautiful tarantulas, and uh, although pricey, well worth it. Here's her feeding. To the next one this is arc light my brachypema smithy mexican red knee this is another one of my favorites in the hobby along with the b bomai uh this one molted about probably around a, a week and a half maybe after the uh, b amelia molted so like i said I'm, both of these sections cover around about a month and uh this is literally like maybe eight or nine days after uh, this one molted so uh, ready for feeding straight off the bat um, I didn't even know this one molted. I came down, saw that it molted. I was like, oh, wow. I cannot believe how beautiful this tarantula was when it popped out of this molt. It is amazing. The fresh, and, I mean, and this is a good comparison because you can look over to the right side and see that molt there and just see how brown it is and how muted those uh, red, orange, and yellow uh, accented knees are and going down the legs uh, and how beautiful that carapace looks surrounding that black. 
These are really gorgeous tarantulas, especially when they come out of the... I mean, it's so worth it when these guys get bigger, male or female, to see this coloration. And uh, let's take a look at this one feeding. <laughs> 